Boom. Welcome back, boom, Liz. Boom. You too, Russ. Good we, to we see you. We took some time off, and now we're back. So uh, you want to catch can... us up on what we're doing today? I will. This is episode 49, and we're going to be talking with Mitch Mitchell. Mitch is a uh, writer, uh, uh, early trade writer, but now he is in the studio business. So we're going to be talking about his sound alarm studio and how he got into that. And we're going to get to audiobooks because, you know, on this show, it's about author adventure, and we're talking about the art and business of publishing. So Russ and I always want to give you um, opportunities and different revenue streams. And we, we know what the main revenue streams, don't we, Russ? I mean, the books, what, ebooks, workshops. Yeah. There's all kinds. And, and we're going to be releasing a, uh, you know, some more content that you can get online at uh, theauthoradventure.com. So want to make sure that you have... Uh, you have an opportunity to learn more about what we're doing here. So, yeah, so that'll be great. So we've got, you know, you can do newsletters. Obviously when you're publishing, the main things are a paperback, a hardback, an ebook, audio book, which is what we're talking yeah. about today. So really excited about that. Cause we've not talked about audio books before, but before yeah. we jump into that with Mitch, I, you know, I just wanted to mention, we always try to mention one of our five, our five secrets and the, the secret we're talking about today is distribution. And I want to talk a little bit about churches. Um, if you've got a Christian fiction novel or you've got a self-help book or you've got something to do, maybe it's with divorce or relationship or finance or business, all of those are things that a lot of churches will have speakers come in and do. And especially if you're an author. Mm -hmm. So you might want to consider that as an option. But obviously there are different churches or different denominations. You need to kind of understand that denomination. Like I'm Presbyterian. We're a little more intellectual. We would be more likely to bring a speaker in from outside more than maybe the Baptist church. They kind of like to keep themselves contained. But um, also if it's a big church versus a small church, a big church like the church I go to in Dallas, the largest Presbyterian church in Dallas, we have a staff. So if I was going to sell my book to them, I would go to the adult minister, a staff person that handles adult ministry and pitch my book to them. Can I do this for your women's group? Can you buy these books and give them to your, you know, to a Sunday school class and use them as a resource? So those are things that you can do. That's a distribution. We are going to talk a bunch more. We talk about military. We talk about bookstores, retail, library schools. The list goes on and on. And but today I don't want to take up too much of our time because we want to jump into this audio books with Mitch and we want to hear his story, don't we, Russ? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of opportunities that people don't net recognize as a result of doing an audio book. And I think it's really important that people understand the just the process and what's required, because it can be as complex as you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be with people right. like Mitch. So let's uh, let's make sure that we express this kind of idea and uh, allow people to understand what it takes and, and what is possible as well, as much as anything. So let's yeah. bring Mitch on and, and uh, invite him to share a few ideas with us. So welcome, Mitch. How are you doing today? Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> Can you hear us, Mitch? You got it? And we got you? We're not hearing you. Did we lose it? Mitch, you there? He can't hear us you, now. Well, you can't it. hear us? He can't hear us now. I don't know what we did. We heard you fine a while ago. What's going on here? Yeah. We'll figure it out. Let's see. Let me, we... let me drop him out and come back in, Mitch. Let's try to. You're doing so well there, too, but it's technology and we roll with it. <laughs> Now can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Still we can't, can't hear you, Mitch. Why well, don't you leave and come back in using the link if you can? Uh, put it in I'm there. I did it. I'll put it in the Got link. It. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah. So anyway, so, you know, we're live. So when you're live, sometimes you have some technology issues. And so we're going to, we're going to test it out here. We had great sound earlier. We had perfect sound <laughs> when we tested earlier before we started, but uh, Mitch is going out and he's going to try to come back in. We'll see if we can pick this up here and keep going. Well, and, and the reality is, is Liz, we have so many things that we're working through uh, as, especially as an author and somebody that is actually dealing with the technology because you know writing a book is not necessarily the same way as it was a hundred years ago you know we're we're able to type in a word processor or a computer nowadays and you know edit very easily and even transcribe and record your voice and turn it back into transcription and let's see if uh, mitch could come back he's been out here can you hear us mitch yes that's better yeah. Right. <laughs> now we got you. Fabulous. Okay. All right. So, so thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. You bet. So then tell us a little bit. We always kind of start, Mitch, with, you know, a little background. Tell our audience, our listeners, a little bit about what you do. I mean, obviously, we met a few years ago when you were writing. And uh, so you were, a, were you a journalism major or were you just, uh, was that a side job or something? <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> it was, I was just, uh, like I always, uh, you kind of like writing like, like poetry and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And then it kind of like led me more towards the, uh, the audio production part. Uh -huh. um, then as that was happening, then that's how things all kind of merged together with me, uh, creating the recording studio. Okay. Great. And, uh, just that's how it all kind of found me. <laughs> yeah, I kind of found you and found it. And so you uh, so you have your own recording studio in Dallas, Texas, right? It's up kind of in North Dallas off 635 near the Galleria. If you're in the North Texas area, and we have a lot of listeners uh, from this area just because we're I'm in Dallas. Uh, Russ, or my partner you met, is in Phoenix. But um, but yeah, so people don't um, I think people kind of have a. Um, misconception about studios they think it's real expensive they think oh i can't go to a studio i'm not good enough uh you know i need to you know it's it's too expensive it's i don't know anything i won't know what the technology is but it's not like that is it i mean when you work with a client you know kind of kind of step us through your process there if somebody comes to you like me i will come to you because i want to do an audio book uh -huh. And so um, do you have narrators and things or people that you, you know, talent that you work with yourself or is that something that the client brings when they come to you? Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, no, no, sh no, no shoot fits all people. Um, right. So it's like, there's times where uh, I had them narrate it themselves. Uh -huh. Um. Uh -huh. I've had had times where I have actress or actors come in and narrate it. Um, it just really all depends. For those books that are like more personal or like um, connect with with the the actor or mm -hmm. the the actress that connects with them, uh, that's kind of how they go about it. So, like for example, uh, they say, "Oh, well, this is a bio of a self help book. I want to mm -hmm. narrate it myself." Uh, in this case, it could be like a, a kid's book or anything. And they say, oh, well, I'm not fit for this because I don't have the voice for this. So let me just hire an actor or an actress to right. do this for me. So it, it just really varies um, how that goes. Yeah, depending on what kind of genre you're writing, like you say, if it's a children's mm -hmm. book or a fiction book, a lot of times they're characters and they're multiple characters. So yep. you need somebody that's a voice talent. You need somebody that is, like you say, a professional actor, actress, and you can you can find those people uh, through free, freelance things. I mean, I know the audio platforms like ACX and uh, Audible and all of those places. I mean, they have uh, folks too on their list that you can go and find a narrator that way. My advice would be to ask around to people that in the business and say, who did you use? Because if somebody's used somebody and they liked them, you know, they'll want to recommend them. We do a lot of nonfiction, so a lot of times our people will actually read the book themselves. Like we have a chef, and he understood the language and the baking and some of the ingredients, and you know better than somebody from outside. 
So he uh, read his, and I'll, I'll tell my story about that toward the end here, but <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's still a little bit complicated, but with somebody like Mitch's help or a publisher's help, you know, you can get an audio book done. And um, they, you know, there's no limit to the time frame either, is there, Mitch? I mean, it can be short, it can be. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things where um, I always think of it as like there has been times where I seen the IO book been done in two days, mm -hmm. and that was really intense. Uh, but these people, they had the skill in broadcasting. They had the skill in and that perfection professional. Um, to be able to speak and they knew how to speak. Um, that's not everybody's case. So, right. <laughs> uh, so, so I, yeah, I, I, I think it took us like, like, I think we days. were like in the studio six different days, you know, for three or four yeah. hours at a time because, because <laughs> yes, you know, you read it and if you stumble, then you got to stop and then restart over again and read it again. And so, uh, so it can be, you know, like you say, it can take you some time and, and I, I guess that's part of it in the past, which was so expensive with studio time. But I think that's come down a little bit, don't you? I mean, the studio, the equipment's yeah. not as expensive as it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you were able to set up your studio, right? And, um, you know, I'm sure there's still pieces that, you know, you dream of yeah. having on the, a, a board or something. There's some, probably some piece of equipment, you know, that's really expensive that they're going, one of these days I'm going to get one of those, you know. <laughs> Well, I'm the same way with the computer, you know, and software and stuff, but uh, or printers or whatever. But um, but yeah, so tell us. So you've been doing, uh, you know, some nonfiction. Have you done the children's books with somebody? I haven't. Mostly... I haven't done. I haven't done nonfictions yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done a lot of like self help type of books, right? Uh huh. Uh, okay. Like like women self help books. Uh -huh. I have done uh, Christian uh, self help books. I have done uh, marriages, self-help books, just more in the self-book uh, era. Right. I look forward to doing uh, more other books in the future. I'm, I am open to that, too, as well. Yeah, so you can reach out. If you're listening, you're watching, you can reach out and speak to Mitch. He's uh, You can follow him on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, on LinkedIn. His company is called Sound Alarm Studio. So it's S-O-U-N-D-A-L-A-R-M-S-T-U-D-I-O. -E so if you're listening on the podcast, it's Mitch at soundalarmstudio.com. So you can always uh, call him, email him, go to his website, fill out the contact information, tell him what you're looking for. And, and he's going to, you know, he's going to have a conversation with you and, you can figure out what it's like, right? Because the budget's going to be different. You know, if you hire a narrator, a professional person, obviously you're probably going to have to spend a little more money. You know, if you narrate yourself, then then that might not cost you quite as much. But uh, but you want to do it in a professional studio with me, people like Mitch, because I can tell you, like you say, when I was doing my chef, we did our audio thing, and this was before I knew Mitch had a studio, or I'd been over in his <laughs> studio. But we were at the studio and we had to do 72 chapters because my oh. author had little short chapters. They were like only three or four pages long, but they were 72. Well, when we did the audio book, we put it in, we loaded it, we uploaded and all of that to ACX. Well, they said, checked it, they sound checked it, and they sent us an email back and said, well, you've got some issues with a couple of your files. Mm -hmm. You need to reload those files. Well, they wouldn't tell us what files they were. We kept emailing <laughs> back. Well, which file is it? Is it chapter four? Is it chapter right. 16? Is it chapter 18, 89, whatever, you know, <laughs> and they never would tell us. So we finally just ended up having to scrub Absolutely. 72 files at the studio, wow. go back in the studio, take some special software, scrub every the sound because he had a tendency. He had a pen in his hand where he was writing notes on his script. <laughs> And then he was tapping that pen on the count on the side, you know, on the, the, the lesson. I mean, the, you know, the, the music holder stand or whatever, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, where he had his script. So we went, Oh my gosh. But you know, we reloaded the, the 72 files and it went fine and it's great. And, and he's selling audio books and he actually makes more money on his audio books than he does on his other books, you know, because with, 
with print books and paperback, you know, you've got the cost to print it first and then you've got the split and it, it's still, it's a nice split. It's 60, 40, you get 60% if you're the author on an ebook, I think it's 30 per 70% and they get 30%. So you still make a little money, but with an audio book, you know, you might sell that for $19.99 or $15.99. And like you say, you end up only costing you a couple of dollars by the time you, you know, do a hundred books or something like that, or 50 books, it's paid for itself. Right. So, so can you kind of budget just to estimate for us? I know don't give, you know, I'm not going to hold you to any price, but if somebody's <laughs> doing maybe like something that's a couple hours, three or four hours, uh, you know, versus a couple of days in the studio, uh, what, what would they be looking at? Would they need to budget so they can go get a second job? <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I would say, I would say, uh, budget anywhere between like well i was i would say starting anywhere between like like 27 at the most 2700 mm -hmm. starting right um yeah. the reason why i say that i mean it, it can go up but that's that's what right I'm sorry, sorry i said the reason right, why i say right. that because the lot a lot of the editing a lot of the takes um a lot of reassuring and making sure you going back and actually having that peace of mind of hearing like, is this the right take to this chapter? <laughs> this sentence, run on with this sentence, does this needs to be edited this way? And the point of it is to, um, when you walk away from recording your IO book, you wanna be able to uh, submit it to the, to be able to submit it to the ACX. Uh, and that's something that I provide for my clients. I, I do the ACX for them. Right, you set up in that platform. for yeah, I right. upload it for them because right. I know that like there's certain language that they may use like DB <laughs> uh DB uh levels, and that's a foreign language to the client. But to me, I'm right. like, oh, I understand that language. <laughs> so what so are they talking about? I mean, I yeah, what are they you. talking about? And so oh. it so to take all the guesswork out, I like to attack the yeah. ACX uploading with them as well. Yeah. So that way that's right. already taken care of. And it's a little, little bit more easier process for them overall. And then they also yeah, like sure. they also can come back in and kind of like finish uh, uh -huh. to finish because I, I see everyone through it. I don't just say, oh, I'm done with it. On to the okay. next audio book. I'm like, no, let's make sure we get, right. get it finished and complete it and upload it and make sure that they approve for it because they're they're really strict on their rules, like you were saying right. earlier. Yeah, really, well, really and, and I didn't, I didn't know we had to do an intro and an exit, and you know, we actually ended <laughs> yeah. up getting somebody else to do that. He had a lady that had done like his phone, uh, his phone calling for him that he just loved. Yeah. I guess she had a French accent or something, and he he liked her British accent. He liked her voice, and so, you know, she he ended up hiring her, and we hired her, and she recorded the the intro and the exit for us because you have to add that stuff too. So there's things that you have to add that, you know, as the author, you you don't know these technical things. And so that's why you want to work with somebody like Mitch and uh, who has a studio, who understands the language. Because I can tell you, I mean, I've been in a long time, but when I read all that stuff, I was going, what are they talking about? You know, and, and luckily I had some other friends that have a studio and we were able to go over there and get it done. But but like you say, it's a learning process, but we it's what we call our show, The Art and Business of Publishing because you need to have a budget. And we, we always tell people when we're talking to them, be sure that you start a publishing budget and that you have a publishing plan. And there are pieces to that. And writing is one piece, publishing is one piece, launching is one piece, marketing and promotion is a piece, and then distribution, actually selling that book to somebody because marketing is not necessarily the same as selling. Marketing is telling somebody you got something for sale, but until they buy it, <laughs> you know, it's not a sale until somebody actually gives you money. And so, um, but there are different revenue streams. And that's why we wanted to share this today. That's why we were talking about audiobooks, because that's another revenue stream. Um, it's still a huge thing with libraries. They have the equipment to, you know, to download. You can go into a library and rent. Uh, you know, ebooks or borrow ebooks, and you can borrow audio uh, equipment and stuff, or you can just, like you say, download to your phone or download to your computer or your iPad or whatever. Um, and so, 
today there's so much access in there, Mitch, from, from a technological standpoint. It's even though a few years ago, some of this stuff didn't exist, did it? Yeah, yeah. I, I like a lot of the dial books is more th- one of those things that's like on the rise. Um, I say that more people listen to audio books more than ever now. And, and, so, like, and so like you used to have, used to have like the, the, uh, like audio books with the cassette tapes and the CDs with the CD ROMs. <laughs> right. But that's right. more on a digital scale. Yeah. And uh, I think that, I think cause like when you have the audio books alongside with the, the PDF read real long, and then mm-hmm. you have the physical books, it just, you're missing out on a whole lot. You know, if you, I feel like if you don't, uh, you know, attack those, diff- like you said, different streams of different streams, yeah, different well, streams from from one book, you know, um, yeah, you got you got different revenue streams. You also have people that learn differently. Yeah. Okay, I'm an auditory learner, so I I want an audio book. I want to hear the voices. I mean, I kind of hear the voices anyway in my head, the conversation, but. You know, I, I'm more of an auditory learner than a visual learner or a kinetic learner. That means I want to touch it and feel it. That's why people always ask us all the time, are paperbacks going away? No, they're not. They said paperbacks are going away when ebooks came out. Well, guess what? We sell more paperbacks than we ever have before, and children especially, because they're on electronic gadgets all day long. And they at night, when they're going to bed, they want to have a book that they can read, that they can touch and feel, and they can... Mm-hmm. turn the pages and they read like this book behind us here, you know, baby bear comes back. I mean, we've got kids that read that and they want to read it every night. You know, parents are, can we read something else? No, baby bear. I want to read baby bear. I want to read baby bear. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you gotta, you gotta put things out there in the way that your audience wants it. Yes. So, um, the more opportunity, the more different ways you can put your product and your services out there, the more chance you are that you're going to sell it, you know, and that you're going to do well. And mm-hmm. and somebody's going to listen to it and they're going to go, wow, you know, I, I, I listened to this great mm-hmm. book the other day and they're going to tell other people. And so that word of mouth is what's going to help, you know, promote the book and promote the stuff like that. Well, I'm sure you do other things. Obviously, we're always we're all about books here, but I'm sure you do other kind of studio work. So you probably do what commercials and promos and yeah, yeah, radio I find, spots, all that kind yep, of stuff. Yep, I find I find myself uh, doing a lot of things in the audio world. Um, mm-hmm. Most people don't understand, but audio is everywhere. So it's like uh, it's on the radio, uh, it's yeah. broadcasting, podcasting, Audible books music production it's it's everywhere voiceover i yeah. mean it's it's everywhere it's 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 there more than we actually think which is so funny right well and even what even alexa you know that the, the yep. alexa thing that voices i mean those are narrations that the the different stuff that uh, people have sent in you know uh, when they first very first started doing that you know i got emails about do i want to you know do narration or do i want did i want to submit copy you know for a particular product or service and you know so so you really are uh mitch is right it, it can be anything today and uh, like you say, people can access on their phone, they can access on their tablets, they can access on their computer, their desktop, and, and now in their car when they're driving, you know. So uh, if you're on a platform like a Spotify or, a, uh, you know, any of the podcasting platforms, any of the live streaming platforms, you can get your information there. And so uh, it, it's a really exciting time to be alive, don't you think, Mitch? Are you excited yeah. about yeah yeah technology and absolutely absolutely (laughs) because i felt like with the audio books um i have written i have actually well i listened to more books than i ever (laughs) did actually can read a book but i mean i still i still buy paperbacks and Uh hardcovers too but um i i find myself reading and listening to more a lot right ever but the audio helps for sure like the audio is like that if I'm busy throughout the day, I'll, I'll say, oh, well, let me just connect my my ear pods or my headbud yeah. and just listen yeah. to audio. And it, it helps me move faster. And right. Makes, well, makes and, and learn work. things. Yeah. yeah, learn things that you don't have time to learn. I mean, it was so funny. One of our clients who wrote for SMU a book about SMU, a sports book, 
he was like, well, Liz, you know, I said, Dave, have you thought about doing an audio book? And he was like, well, an audio book, why do I need an audio book? I said, Dave, do you go to the fitness center? Because, you know, I knew he did. I knew he worked out every day. He said, yeah, I go. I said, how many people are in there when you go in? Oh, I don't know, 100, 200 people. Because, you know, it's a big place over in Highland Park and by SMU because, you know. And I said, how many of those people in there are entrepreneurs, do you think? And he said, oh, I would bet about at least half of them, if not more. I said, are they (laughs) business people? And he said, yeah. I said, do you think they're listening to rock and roll music? No, they're listening to an audio book or they're listening about something about marketing or something about sales or managing people or managing yeah. inventory because mm-hmm. they don't have any other time. They're working. Yeah. They're managing their team. They're selling their product. I said that they're listening to an audio book to learn <laughs> the next thing or maybe they are relaxing. Maybe they are listening to a book like your book about sports uh, and, and about college football, you know, because they they want to they want to relax for that 30 minutes that they're in the gym <laughs> you know but he was like oh well i never had thought about that oh yeah okay <laughs> so you know everywhere you see, oh, you're gonna see people they're working in the house they're working in the yard they're running they're biking they're hiking they got their look and see yep. if they got earbuds in yep. and they probably do don't they yeah yep. yep that's true it's like the new trend you see someone with one of those things in the ear <laughs> in both or one or the other. In both ears, like and they're listening I can't to something. Because I have like yep. I have little bitty ears and I can't keep my stuff in very well. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Midge so much. Well, tell us again. Go ahead and give your uh, information again. So for people that are listening, I mean the time goes so fast. Uh, we'll have to have you come back and we'll have to talk some more about this because you know, I think it's an opportunity that people don't realize, you know, how easy it is. And maybe we can come back next time and kind of say, you know, this kind of step one, this step two, step three, and let people know kind of how that works. But uh, tell them again how they can contact you. And then, uh, and then we'll do a wrap up. Maybe you can give us one last golden nugget that you think uh, most Mm -hmm. people don't either. Some people don't know that they need to know, or just your best advice about how to work with somebody like you. Okay. So you you guys could uh, look up the studio uh, at soundalarmstudio.com uh, or you can Google Sound Alarm Studio and uh, learn more about the company. Uh, if you want to reach me, uh, you go to um, soundalarm.com uh, and then you go to the contact page, put your information in there and just kind of talk about like what's your needs and what's your goals and I'll be sure to contact you within 24 hours or less. Um, I would say one golden nugget I could give away is that before you do an audio book, make sure you have it PDF formatted. I would say that. Uh, Because PDF format is where you have a book formatted in the type of way that you will read it. If you're reading it on the Kindle or iPad. Um, Because that's the way that you will want to read it when you come in a professional studio to read that um and that makes the process that much faster um for acx uh Mm -hmm. for production and overall for a professional like me so that way i can read along with you as well and see exactly what you're doing and how you're reading each word or script or chapter and so forth yeah, for sure. So that yeah, so that's a great piece of advice because what happens with the PDF is it's locked in and it's not going to change. It's not going to be yep. fluid. And so, you know, you're over here reading one thing and Mitch is over here on something else, and it's like, oh well, you've got you've you've read you know you've read past the page and you're on the next page, but his script is still on the first page, you know, because you don't have you're not looking at the same thing. So. So that's a very good advice. So and then you're going to have to load those kind. You know, you're going to have to load audio files. But a lot of times, like you say, for any other platform, you're going to have to have, you know, a, a PDF is the most, uh, you know, usable format. Mm-hmm. Some people let you do Word documents or, you know, and even uh, even Amazon has gone to the EPUB file. You know, for years they had their own platform, their own format for Mobi, but they've just switched over. So, uh, you know, any of the other platforms that you're putting your information up on, if it's not an audio file, like what is an MP3 or an MP4? What's a, um, or does it depend? 
it, it so like the the highest formation uh it will be like a wave w a wave file okay uh, w a v file that yeah that'd be, that'd be the yeah. highest because that's the highest quality um, right that's high density right the high yeah. the highest quality of of the mp3 and p4 right mm -hmm. okay great so so that's it so see that's why you need a professional like mitch <laughs> you know that's why you need to go to sound alarm studio if you're thinking about doing an, an audio book um, get some help with that. Be sure, you know, decide if it's something you think you can read yourself or if you need somebody else to read it. If you've got characters or voices, you know, maybe your book's about two little dogs, you know, then, you know, maybe that one person can do both those voices, but you may need two people, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes somebody can read the different voices and sometimes they can't. So, uh, if same thing with fiction, you know, when you've got fiction, you've got different characters. And so uh, maybe one person can read all those different characters and do different voices, but they need a sound engineer to edit <laughs> that <laughs> stuff because it's not going to be, you know, there are going to be pauses. There are going to be times where you kind of stumble and you're just going to have to edit that out. And it's the editing process that takes as long really as the narration sometimes, doesn't it? Because, Maybe you want sound effects. I mean, you can do sound effects, can't you? You know, maybe the door slamming or somebody running up the stairs or or, or whatever, you know, horses riding by outside for us for Cowboys of Color. You know, we'd want to be, da -da 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 -da. you know, we want to have those galloping hooves. <laughs> I actually had a time where someone, um, um, she had me create like a music bed uh -huh. for a little book. So like she would have like a meditation part of uh -huh. the book. Uh, yeah. and every part of the meditation part, she will like, she would like have this part where I had this music. It was the same music for the, the same, for the music, same, over over same music yeah. going, but for each specific chapter, she yeah. would have the meditation, but it was the music for the music bed. And the reason why she did that, because she wanted to make it more, uh, engaging, more exciting, for people. um, more interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. and she was happy that you know, that she'd done that. It, it was just an idea. I pitched it to her. I said, hey, what do you think about this? And yeah. she's like, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So that's the other thing you're going to get. When you work with somebody like Mitch, when you work with somebody like me and Russ, I mean, we're going to have these other ideas and these thoughts and creative things, brainstorms that come to us. And we're going to say, what do you think about this? So, Mitch, thank you so much for being here. Thank I'm sorry right. our time goes that's, so fast, but we're right. so so grateful that you shared these tips with us and these strategies. So people, uh, if you're here watching, you got to hear Mitch today. If um, You can always come back and see this on the recording. It gets archived to our YouTube channel. So go to our YouTube channel at Author Adventure and subscribe. And then you can go watch all the other 48 episodes that we have here and interviews, other exciting interviews like Mitch's interview today. So Thanks so much. This has been Liz Lawless, your host for Author Adventure with my partner, Russ Johns, and our guest today, Mitch Mitchell of Sound Alarm Studio. Go check him out. Bye-bye. Thanks.